Hi folks, my name is David Hannon. I'm an anesthesiology and intensive care registrar in Galway University Hospital in Ireland. What I'm going to show you today is the Galway vent chair system. This represents a way to use one source of ventilation split into two limbs to ventilate two patients simultaneously with titratable tidal volumes and pressures. So I'll just show you the way the system is set up today. We have it driven by a, an intensive care ventilator. They tend to be much more advanced than is absolutely needed for this kind of system. We've tested on simpler systems, much more basic uh, pressure control systems, and it works just as well. But today, what you can see is a, an intensive care ventilator set up giving 14 breaths per minute, a peep of 10 centimeters of water, uh, FiO2 of 0.5, and each breath being uh, driven by 18 centimeters of water. What that is giving is a tidal volume of 400 mils in this limb of the setup, and a tidal volume which is very similar, 420 mils on this limb. We will demonstrate towards the end of this uh, how you titrate the volumes we will do. First of all, is just talk through the circuit itself. As I said, intensive care ventilator. On the inspiratory limb, as the gas leaves the ventilator, it encounters a Y connector. Just after the Y connector splits between the two limbs, we have an adjustable APL valve. Uh, these ones, uh, which we've completed testing on, are pediatric intersurgical APLs, uh, and we like them, and they've got teddy bears, and that's all good. Then, as soon as the gas passes through the APL valve, which in this configuration is completely open, it goes through the inspiratory limb, and meets the area where the patient would be. This is slightly different than it would be in the final form, and I'll talk you through the differences. In this configuration, the first thing that the gas encounters is a flow meter. This flow meter, as you see it here, wouldn't be part of the final circuit or, or on the patient's chest or anything like that. This is purely for the purposes of uh, measuring and titrating and making sure that all the, all the measurements from the system are correct. So this is a Citrix box, which is a very accurate piece of equipment. In the final configuration, this box will be gone and we replace with the following. So this is a small flow meter, which will sit here in the circuit. And this wire then goes to a monitor. And that monitor then can sit beside each patient and tell you the details of the tidal volumes, etc., that each patient is getting. So obviously, the test lung is representing the patient. Between the flow meter and the patient is a heat and moisture exchanger. This heat and moisture exchanger also has a filter incorporated, which is rated for bacteria and viruses. Then as the gas returns towards the ventilator, the expiratory limb returns, and before the Y connector encounters a one-way valve. That one-way valve ensures that adjustments to either limb doesn't affect the other limb unduly. And then we have a second viral filter to be absolutely sure that there's no cross-contamination between the circuits or back to the machine itself. So that's what you're seeing. This is a result of a great deal of collaboration between clinicians and the local med tech sector in Galway. That's researchers and people in the industry. What we'll do to show you exactly how it works is we'll introduce a restriction into one limb of the, uh, the, the, the circuits. So this component here, this represents a significant restriction in the lung. So we just insert it here, and we'll see the change in volume. <coughs> so the tidal volume on this limb was about 400, and you can see that it's gone down significantly to 325. On the other limb, we still have a tidal volume of 420, which is what it was set at when we began the process. What I'm going to demonstrate is simply how we have found works well to return to the original, uh, the original volumes. So the first step that I would do realistically is I put it up to 100% oxygen. 
We obviously don't want to risk any sort of volume trauma or barotrauma on Julie to each patient. So what we find is the easiest way is to simply introduce a significant restriction by the AKL valve in order to bring that tidal volume below the level of, of the other limb. So you can see it's 288 there. What we can do now is return to the ventilator and using the inspiratory pressure for each breath, we can return this limb back to the tidal volume that we want and then return to this limb and titrate it back to the total equal. So that's a 330. We'll take a step up to 20 centimeters of water and monitor for the effect. You see the tidal volume has increased already. We'll go to 22. So 395, that is close enough to the original value, 394. Now we return to the limb on the left of the machine. Tidal volumes here are 330, we want them back to 400, 420. So we go to the APL valve and we begin to open it again. And we see what effect it has on the tidal volumes here. 442. So we'll close it again until we're back at the value that we want. Tidal volume there for each breath of 411, and then we can return and put the FiO2 back to the original level. And so now we have the system in essentially the state it began in. Tidal volume here 411 mils per breath, 395 mils per breath on this. And at no point did we set up any warning alarms or risk any damage to each patient. Mm -hmm. There are limitations to the system in its present form. There are certain things that we're hoping in the future as we revise and improve the system to be able to titrate between each limb. The ideal would be if we can alter the peak in each limb, but at the minute, in this form that you see today, we match the patients based on having a similar peak. And the other ideal would be to alter the FiO2 in each limb. These are all things that you might see in the future, but at the minute, in its basic form, you can see how it works.